Welcome to Android Week on Butterscotch.com, the show where we navigate the wily waves of Android news to get to what's important to you, or at least to me. I'm Andrew Morkhurst. First off, Android Week has obtained a super secret document that was only sent out to, well, every Android developer out there and to some bloggers. This letter from the Android Market team outlines some of the changes that will impact developers. Namely, we're talking about new image sizes, an official requirement that each app in the market have at least one screenshot, and some new protocols around issuing app updates. The new image sizes, specs, and requirements are arguably the most interesting development here. If you read between the lines, you might assume that either A, there will finally be a decent way to browse the Android market when you're on your computer, B, that Android is actively paving the way for a more comprehensive tablet strategy, C, true, or D, all of the above. We've been watching this next story for a while, and it seems it's starting to hit the mass consciousness. Lifehacker recently posted a guide for getting Android running on your iPhone 3G. Assuming you have an iPhone 3G, you're probably lamenting the fact that your once shiny and cutting edge piece of consumer kit is now collecting dust on a shelf, or worse yet, is killing your productivity as you wait through dragging load times on apps. Now, you can breathe new life into your aging handset by shoehorning a special build of the Android operating system onto your iPhone 3G. This is not a silver bullet solution, not by a long shot. The interface is a bit laggy, there's some weird button mapping we'll have to get used to, and power management is just not working. However, you can make and receive calls, get on your Wi-Fi network, and generally get Steve Jobs knickers in a twist. This is a dual booting solution, which means you have the option of which OS you want to run, either iOS or Android, when you turn on your phone. It's also a surefire way to impress the geeky guy or girl of your dreams. Now, there's not a lot of detail in this next story, which, of course, gives us license to speculate wildly. Google's Eric Schmidt was seen sporting a new smartphone at the Web 2.0 Summit, and while he declined to name names, the unannounced device bears a striking resemblance to the rumored Nexus S, the follow-up to the Nexus One. While Schmidt was coy and wouldn't talk about the hardware itself, he outlined some of what Google thinks is going to be important in the next iteration of the Android OS, dubbed Gingerbread, coming soon. One very interesting discussion was on near-field communication, or NFC. You're probably familiar with NFC in the tap and pay options that are increasingly popping up at gas stations, grocery stores, and fast food restaurants. The theory of, of the case is that you'll be able to take these, these mobile devices from, from everybody and you'll be able to walk into stores, right, and do commerce, and eventually replace literally credit cards. Basically, if Google has its way, you can just leave your wallet at home and pay for everything on your phone. NFC is about more than just transactions, though. It can be used to, for example, tap to get a map of a trade show or a mall, tap to download a coupon, or tap to exchange contact information. Definitely one to watch for. It's now time for our review of the day. Today, we're taking a look at the Gmote app. Since the launch of the remote app on the iPhone, Apple devotees have been able to use their mobile as a remote control for playing music on the computer. Gmote unlocks similar functionality for Android users. You may never have to pull your posterior off the couch again. Install the Gmote app on your Android handset and install a small piece of server software on your computer. Windows, Mac, and Linux are all supported. Input a password on both devices and now they're talking to each other over your wireless home network. Once the two pieces of software are acquainted with each other, you can browse files on your computer right from your phone. Queue up a music playlist to run while you're having a party. You can skip forward or back, stop, play, and pause your music on your handset. You can also change the volume of the playing media. You can also use Gmote as a touchpad mouse and wireless keyboard to take control of your PC. And you can even play video on your computer or home theater. Skip parts, change the volume, all without leaving the well-worn butt groove in your couch. Well, that's all the news that's fit to Google. For full show notes, head to butterscotch.com. Until next time, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.